Hi, we're going to do a 30 table join spanning 30 systems in a single query. So what I did was I was able to create 30 tables that have a relationship on Postgres. So now I'm going to move those 30 tables to 30 different systems, and then we'll be able to do the join. So my source is Postgres. My target is Oracle. I just use the database mover. Now, oftentimes it takes a lot of time to convert, but watch Nexus do the conversion from Postgres tables to Oracle. Nexus will convert the table structures between all systems in seconds. Now I'm gonna actually execute this. It's doing the conversions. Now Nexus is building the load scripts between these two systems. And if it turns green, it moves successfully and we've been able to move from Postgres to Oracle. This isn't a lot of data, but I have customers moving billions of rows on a daily basis. Now, here's just a screenshot. Here's where we moved it to Azure Synapse. Here's Amazon Redshift. Notice the color changes. Here's DB2, MySQL. Now we're just showing off. It's getting silly. Here's Vertica, all right, yellow brick. Nexus migrates everything. There's the Google BigQuery, Greenplum. We've moved this 30 times. Now, each system has the same 30 tables. Now, let's show you the Super Join Builder and how it works because it will help us build queries. If you don't know SQL, this is perfect for you. If you do, you'll love it as well. So, I'm going to start with Postgres and let's say right click on addresses and it shows it visually in the Super Join Builder. Now I go to a Snowflake system, and I'm going to open up my Join 30 Tables schema. That's where I put them on Snowflake, and I go, okay, here's how it works. I just drag a table in, and I touch the table that I wanted to join to, and it says, hey, what do they join on? I go state and state. Hit the blue button, say finish, and now notice each time I check mark a column on any table, the SQL is built. I'm running this on Postgres, which means the Snowflake table will move to Postgres, so the migration comes back into play. It's temporary, and now I get my answer set. Now watch this. I'm gonna change the hub. Now everything's gonna to run to Snowflake, but I'm gonna make a couple adjustments. I want subscriber number first. I wanna do an order by statement here. And so now this is, allows you to manipulate the SQL very quickly. SQL is built perfectly. And now when I execute this, this time the Postgres table will move over to Snowflake. And there's my answer set again. Now, prepare yourself for the most clever thing you've ever seen. I'm going to change the hub to my PC. That means it's going to come out here and it's going to query both tables separately, brought it back to my PC, Watch how quick this is, and bingo. My PC's doing the join using my memory and CPU. It's like its own data warehouse. So let's continue on and build our 30 table join. Here's SQL Server, drag claims into the table it joins to, and they go, here's the load utilities we'll use. We have about 400 different load utilities based on the systems that you're moving. And how do they join? Now, this is interesting. This joins on two columns. So subscriber number, subscriber number, member number, and member number. I hit the blue button twice. And now that table comes in. And we just continue down here. Now I'll add a MySQL table in, and we'll continue this. I'll do one more, and then I'll finish these up for you so we get to our 30 pretty quickly here. It takes about 10 minutes to do this. So that's like a six-month project if you had to do this by hand. So now, once again, we go, how do these join? And it goes calendar date and claim date. And I'll press that, the blue button, and finish. And now I am on my way. Here I finished it for you. As you can see, we now have 30 tables from 30 different systems. And there they are. You can see them. Now watch, I'll start to pick the columns. First name and last name, notice it is in the select statement now. I went claim date, it's coming in next. It's our subscriber number, member number. Then we'll come over and we'll start claim date. Let's go with claim amount. Remember, I can adjust these with the column choose or the order by. 
And now I'll go through each one and quickly pick the columns I want. You've seen Snowflake DB2 SQL Server. This looks like a MySQL table. Let's move down to a Redshift table. Here's my Azure Synapse. I've got a Teradata table next. Let's pick something from there. County name. Let's come over here and go with our Oracle table. And we'll go with the Gross Domestic for 2017. I'm going to come over to my DB2 and get, uh, let's go with the average speed. We'll go to another Snowflake system and we'll get the make and model. Here's a Vertica system. It's a beautiful system to work with. And then I'm going to go to another MySQL. Here's a yellow brick system. Let's pull something in for my SQL Server on the cloud system. I've got another Teradata on the IntelliCloud here. I've got another Oracle system out there on AWS. I got a DB2 mainframe. I'll get the time zone in SQL Server again out there on Azure. Now, this is the SQL that was built for me. Pretty daggone impressive that it it just taken a couple seconds. This graph and chart is designed to show me the varying systems and the tables so I can pick where I'm going to do the hub. Right now, the hub is Snowflake. It's up in the right hand corner. That's where everything is going to move to in this first attempt. But I could change the hub to any system and the SQL will change. The load utilities will change and everything will move to that system. That's really the amazing piece here. Now, right now, the Nexus is converting all of the table structures to Snowflake, since we're moving things to Snowflake, when the log starts to flash, that means the data is now moving from every one of these systems over to Snowflake temporarily. Well, they'll be dropped when this query is done. And I leave the Super Join Builder. And now it is running this query. And there it is. Simply amazing. It's unbelievable. It's been about 20 years. Now, watch what I'm going to do. This is going to put our Tableau folks and our Power BI people on steroids. Instead of getting an answer set, I'm going to create a table on Vertica. Now all my people can come in to the Vertica Data Mart and they can run all of their Tableau. They can run Power BI, whatever they want. So I'm going to say I want it on a Vertica. And now I'm going to call it this AAA Amazing Vertica Table. I create the table. Things are again moving to Snowflake. And then from there, they're going to move over to Vertica using the ODBC export copy local, which is a Vertica real fast data mover. Things are preparing. Things are moving. And now get ready. That table has been created from a 30 system join over to Vertica. And we'll go check it out right now. It's going to exist. If it didn't, if there's an error, Nexus will say that didn't make it, but it said it was successful and I'll just do a quick select and uh, there is the data and right here it comes. So that table was created over there on Vertica. Now, here we go on some really interesting things. Watch what I'm going to do next. I've got this answer set. I went to the Garden of Analytics in Nexus and I go, I want to do a window function on it. I want to get a cumulative sum on all of my claims over the last four years. And it says, okay, what do you want to see some? I go, I want the claim amount. It goes, what do you want to sort this data set by? And I go, I want to do it by subscriber number, member number. You see, once you get an answer set in Nexus, you can go to the Garden of Analytics and everything is done for you with pointing and clicking. This is going to create a new report with analytics that's got a CSUM on this. So Nexus becomes its own data warehouse. And as you can see here, do a little manipulation and they go, oh, this was the total for all of your claims. And I go, yes, 1.659 million were my claims. Now, I'm going to change the hub on a 30 table join to my PC. So everything's converted. And now we're going to query separately each table. It'll bring it back to my PC.
bringing only the rows and the columns that are checkmarked or part of the sort key or part of the join condition. It only brings the rows and the columns necessary. And look how fast this is. All 30 tables are coming back to my PC and there is my answer set once again. So now if you've seen it, you just change that hub to my PC and you're good to go. This is going to start bringing everything back to your PC, which is a beautiful way of doing things. If you have less than, you know, a couple of million rows, if you've got billions of rows, I could run that same query on any system or I could run things through the Nexus server. So the Nexus client that I'm on now would communicate with the Nexus server and it would run things there. So as you see, you can always change the hub to my PC. Now, as you can see, there are the 30 tables. Let's watch this one more time and watch what we're going to do after this, because I'm going to put this to the user so they can execute it. There it goes again. It's so fast to run things that way. And there is the answer set. Now, get prepared for some really interesting things here. I'm going back to the super join builder and I am going to save this join. I don't ever have to build this again. Once you do it once and imagine I did a 30 table join in maybe 10 minutes it's to set up. So once I do it once from this point on, I could run this in seconds. So I'm going to call this. This is important. My PC hub 30 table join. And now from this point forward, I can run it from the command line. I can share it with others. There's a wide variety of things that I'm able to do here. So let's take a look at how this is going to roll. Okay. Now that I've got this saved, I am going to run this from a federated query tree. So in my system tree, you can see all my systems to the left over there. And I'm going to go to the bottom of that. And I'm going to say, okie doke, there's my federated query tree at the bottom where I can go, hey, I'd like to add a federated query. And they go, sure, go ahead, which one? So each one that I've saved is in here. I've been doing this for a while. I've got them all over the place. I do the one I just saved and I go, here you go. And it goes, all right, it's now in your tree. So if I come in, in the morning and I want this report, I can just right click and execute and the Nexus will run this federated 30 table join from my PC right here. And I'm going to get this answer set in a couple of seconds. There it is. So it's very important. Once you do something, once you share it with others, you begin to build your IT infrastructure. Now, if I had a zillion rows. I'm going to do something here. I went to the Nexus server. And I go, I want to run a federated query. And they go on the Nexus server. I go, yes, I can schedule this. It's a global calendar. But what's really nice about it is if I had billions of rows, this is where you run this on the server. We have Nexus software for your desktop or laptop, and that can communicate with a Nexus server. We don't give you the hardware. We give you this Nexus server software. Put it on AWS or GCP or Azure or on-premises. And now you've got a real high-powered intermediate there that moves things very fast. So I just ran that query on the Nexus server. You could assume there's hundreds of thousands of rows there. And then it's going to come back and say, yeah, I'm ready to go. And I can go do other things. I can turn off my PC. This is running on a server using my credentials. And this is how you do things with big time data. Now, while that's running, watch this because it's going to be pretty shocking. I can get there. Well, it's back already. So there it is. It came back. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to my search above my systems and I'm going to put in, I want DOM area code. It's going to show me every place that that exists in every system. There it is in Snowflake, DB2, SQL Server. MySQL, Amazon Redshift, Azure Synapse, Teradata, Oracle, Postgres, Vertica, Yellowbread, Greenplum, Netiza, 
SQL Server, my mainframe, my Redshift system, my Snowflake system again, and Postgres on AWS. Even though this is a live tree, I can use this and I can do things on it like move data. I'm doing a super join builder. There was my Snowflake table. I'll drag in a DB2 table and I go, yeah, I want to join those right here. I could have moved the data to another system. I could have done a compare and sync. This will allow you to do anything from that new view of the tree. I just ran this federated query right from my search tree. And now, once again, so easy to do federation. This is the future where it doesn't matter where data is at. You can go get it, join it, move it, save it, back it up, compare it, sync it, run Python scripts on it, anything you need to do. Now, I'm going to do kind of an artificial intelligence. I just went to the biz star and I pressed multi-step. So now it says, well, what source do you want? Now here's the concept. You can save these joins or you can run SQL and you can say, now once that runs, I want to do something with that. So I'm going to hit this task bar and they go, okay, I'm going to run that 30 table join. I'll bring it back to either the server or the PC, wherever you want. And now what do you want me to do with it artificially? What, what do you, job do you want to set up? I go, I want to do a window function on it. We've done a CSUM on it already. I want to do a moving sum as well. It says, okay, I'll run this. I'll bring it back. Here's what the columns are going to look like. And here's some sample data. You want to do claim amount as your moving sum. And you want this data sorted by the claim date. And I go, that's exactly correct. Now I can look for trending through my claims based on claim amount for every seven rows. And now I say, I want to create this. The job's been created. All I have to do is give it a name now and I can run this or schedule this anytime. I'm going to run it from here, but I could have scheduled this on the Nexus server, whatever I want to do here. Now that it's set up, I've got my federated moving sum. Let's execute this. It does the 30 table join and it's going to run here on my PC. That's the way it was set up. And then it's going to bring that answer set back and do whatever I told it to do. And there it is. And I told it, I want that moving sum. Keep that C sum. And as you can see, there is my moving sum for those rows. Everything can be set up pretty much for almost artificial intelligence. I ran that from my PC, but I could have ran that right here on the server. Remember, you do small things and your server can join or move data. It can do anything, analytics, artificial intelligence. But when you have big data or you need a global scheduler, you just go out there and rent a server on AWS or Azure or GCP and put the Nexus server software. Now you can do things on your PC, but now this is running on the Nexus server. So if you've got millions, billions of rows, this will run at a high speed and the answer set is right here. And once again, that ran on the server. There's my answer set with the new moving sum placed in there because I told it to. This is the way modern professionals in IT are going to be doing business. Same with my business users. You know, whether you're migrating to the cloud or you want to join it with legacy data, the combination of the PC with Nexus and a Nexus server gives you world domination and you are about five minutes away from just utopia. Thank you for watching.